Chapter 2, Lesson 1, Exploring Xcode. In this lesson, we're going to be exploring Xcode. Xcode is a very important application that we're going to be spending most of our time in developing iPhone apps. Xcode is a program made by Apple specifically designed to develop iOS and Mac applications. In this tutorial, we'll be showing you around what the certain buttons do and what the certain tabs do. Right now, you're only watching part of this series. The full course includes many more lessons, including how to monetize and submit apps to the App Store. Click the link in the description now to check out the full unabridged course and to create a fantastic source of passive income. Now let's get back to the lesson. When we first launch Xcode, we're going to get the Welcome to Xcode screen. I'm going to create a new Xcode project. I'm going to choose Single View Application and click Next. You can name your product name anything. I'm just going to name mine Explore. Once you've gone in and created an Xcode project, we can explore the first tab. You'll notice in the upper right hand corner these tabs. Selecting them will either open or close the tab. There are three tabs in total. The first tab we'll explore is the left tab. The left tab has eight navigators. The first one is the project navigator. The second one is the symbol navigator. The third one is the find navigator. The fourth one is the issue navigator. The fifth one is the test navigator. The sixth one is the debug navigator. The seventh one is the breakpoint navigator. And the eighth one is the report navigator. The first navigator, also arguably the most important navigator, is the project navigator. When selected, which usually is by default, we have our whole project and all the files that our project has generated for us or you have added. Now when we generate a single view project, we get the following folders and files inside of them. So inside of our project we have appdelegate.h, appdelegate.m, viewcontroller.h, viewcontroller.m, main.storyboard, images.xc assets, launch screen.xib, and inside of that folder is supporting files, info.plist, main.m. We also have the test folder explore.test.m and supporting files. And we also have our products, explore.app and explore.test.xctest. Now, these will be named slightly different based on what you named your project. For example, my product is explore.app because my the name of my app is explore. Now, when we select a file in the project navigator, it'll bring up what the file says. Now, these .h and .m files, we will talk about in great detail later. However, they are very important, and right now you can think of this editor that is mainly selected the whole time as a sort of text editor, but a very special one that Xcode has, and a very helpful one for the type of files we'll be working with. The other navigators are not used too much in your standard development life, and especially the development life cycle of an app. The Find Navigator is helpful. You can type in a certain string of text, like view, and it will find it in all the files that your project holds. The issue navigator is useful when running a project. It'll tell you all the issues that the compiler comes across. The breakpoint navigator is useful if you have breakpoints in your project. And that about concludes the left tab. The left tab is very important for the project navigator and selecting files to both work on and edit. The next one we'll look at is the right tab. Now the right tab is utilities. Currently, we have viewcontroller.h selected. Now, if we go over to the first tab, what we get is the file inspector. And the second tab is the quick help inspector. Now, if we look at the file inspector, we'll see the name of the file and the ability to change it. We're going to see the type of file. We're going to see the location of where that file is, that file's membership, and the text settings that the file has. If we go over to quick help, quick help typically explains what the type of thing we have is. So for example, if we select these, this word right here, UI view controller, we can see the description of the UI view controller. The UI view controller class provides the fundamental view management model for all iOS apps. It's very useful for selecting something, finding out what it is. We also can see where, it's, where that was declared. We can also see the reference, and we can also see assisting sample code. The bottom tab is the log. The log is only really used when we are running a project and our app that we're running 
is displaying things in the log. At the top right here, we have a few options. We have the standard editor, which is what we're using right now. The standard editor, like I said, is simply like a text editor. We also have the assistant editor. What it will do is display two of the standard editors side by side. Going from the standard editor, we have the assistant editor. The assistant editor is very nice because it displays two side by side, and most of the time, it will choose a file that correlates with the other file. For example, we have viewcontroller.h, and we also have its counterpart, viewcontroller.m. This allows us to edit side by side. Version editor is the final view we can select. Now, currently we're in the comparison view, which will compare two like files and see the differences between them. We won't be using this view at much, if at all, in this video series. The final and most important stuff in Xcode is in the top left-hand corner. You'll notice we have a play button much similar to one you'd find in iTunes or on your iPhone. We use this to build and run our app. So if we click it, it will launch Simulator. Now we'll notice up here we have our log. When our app is running, it will log stuff inside of the log. The log is very useful for finding out information inside of your app that you wouldn't otherwise know. For example, when the app has received a memory warning. Also in the top left hand corner is the stop button. If we've already run something, we can stop the app and quit it out by hitting the stop button. This will stop it on simulator. We also have what the current scheme is. Now the scheme is just the app. Like we found down here, we have the .app file. Well, that's the current thing that we're running. And we want to run it on a specific simulator. We'll go into simulators in the next lesson. Remember, this course releases new lessons every Wednesday and Thursday of every week. Subscribe now to not miss them.